Metronome is one of those moves that you either love or hate because, well, it's either going to give you a move that you love or a move that you hate. After watching Madrive Bread's Metronome Only video in Fire Red, I wanted to try this for myself in Generation 8. If you haven't seen his video, check the link in the top right or in the description down below. Can we beat Pokemon Sword only using Metronome? My name is Trench, and we're about to find out. The rules are probably pretty obvious, but just in case, we can only use the move Metronome, no items can be used but held items are allowed, and no glitches or cheats can be used. We'll want to select Sobble as our starter, but we'll get into why a little bit later. After completing the tutorial, we trade over an egg that contains a Togepi. After a bit of grinding, Togepi learns Metronome and we take him to the move deleter to remove the rest of his moveset. We'll be relying on the move deleter several times throughout this run. Our first battle against Team Yell poses no issue given Togepi's massive level advantage and Team Yell's lack of skill. Our real first challenge of the run will be our battle against Hop. He has three Pokemon on his team while we just have our Togepi named Egg. Egg takes out Wulu with a powerful Bulldoze followed by Thrash. Thrash continues to hit Score Bunny, but it isn't powerful enough to take him out. Egg then starts to use moves like Charm and Mind Reader, which aren't offensive moves. This is the frustrating part of Metronome. We take Confusion damage from Thrash and finally take out Score Bunny with Retaliate, which, by the way, has the best attack animation in Generation 8. Hop's last Pokemon, Rook D, takes a powerful Boom Burst from Egg and drops right away. On Route 3, I realize we're going to have a hard time moving forward with only one Pokemon since Metronome only has 10 Power Points. Because of this, we catch a Cleffa and evolve it to a Clefairy so that it can learn Metronome. We find ourselves in Galar Mine battling a young man named Bead, or Bed, or whatever. Our Clefairy that we named Wanda hits Solossus with a Hypnosis right at the start. She follows up with a devastating Sky Attack, taking Solossus out in one hit. Bead's next Pokemon, Gothita, takes an Electro Web and fires back with Psybeam, dealing a decent amount of damage. A few turns later, Wanda uses Substitute, taking most of her own HP in the process. The substitute breaks after one turn, and Wanda's taken out by a third Psybeam. Egg uses Ingrain and takes a Psybeam from Gothita. Metronome becomes Acrobatics on the next turn and takes Gothita out. Hatena gets hit with a Shadow Claw, taking half of its HP. Hatena lands a critical hit Confusion, but Egg takes it like a champ. Egg uses Hypnosis, followed by Jawlock, bringing Hatena down, giving us the win. The battle is enough to push Egg to evolve into a Togetic. Our first gym battle is against Milo. I realized at the start of the battle that our challenge of only using Metronome means that we cannot Dynamax, which will add a bit more difficulty. Milo's Gossifleur uses Rapid Spin, but Wanda's Q Charm ability causes him to become infatuated. Metronome becomes Block, and we get hit with the move Round before trying again and using Venoshock. We take another Round, and Metronome becomes Splash on the next turn. Thankfully, Gossifleur is unable to attack on the next few turns, and Metronome becomes Stomp and Stomping Tantrum, taking out Gossifleur. Milo's Dynamax Eldegoss uses Max Overgrowth and takes Wanda out in one turn. We send out Egg, and Metronome becomes Infestation. Max Overgrowth isn't very good against Egg given that he's part Flying type. Eldegoss goes for Max Strike on the next turn, but it doesn't deal very much damage. After a couple more turns, Egg uses Double Edge and restores some health with the Citrus Berry I gave him. Eldegoss takes damage from Infestation, and Metronome becomes Bug Bite on the next turn, bringing Eldegoss down. Milo hands over the Grass Badge and we press on. We come across Team Yell again on Route 5, but, you know, they're a joke, so... Hop gets the best of us during our next battle, but only because Metronome became Parasong and we couldn't bring Rabu down in time. Things go a bit better on our next turn, and Metronome becomes Ice Shard and Seed Bomb. Wulu uses Double Kick a couple times, but falls to a Slash. Hop's Corvusquire uses Pluck and becomes infatuated with Wanda. We land a critical hit Hammer Arm and then use Aqua Ring. Metronome becomes Heal Pulse on the next turn, and Wanda fully heals her opponent. Wanda uses Substitute and then no offensive moves for the rest of Metronome's power points. We switch to Egg and eventually take out Corvusquire with a Razor Shell. Raboot is sent out and gets hit with a Parabolic Charge, which steals a good chunk of his HP. Raboot uses Round and is then paralyzed by Nuzzle. Metronome becomes Double Edge on the next turn, which finally gets us the victory. After making it to Holberry, we can challenge the next gym leader, Nessa. She got the best of us on our first couple of attempts, but that's to be expected on a challenge run that's entirely based on RNG. Wanda finally gets lucky and burns Goldeen with Ember at the start of the last attempt. Water Pulse doesn't really phase us, and Metronome becomes Trop Kick on the next turn, taking most of Goldeen's health. Burn damage takes care of the rest. Aracuda uses Aqua Jet, and then takes a powerful Thunder, resulting in a one-hit KO. Wanda barely survives a Max Geyser from Dreadnought, and then restores a bit of HP with her Citrus Berry. We get very lucky and use Magical Leaf, but Dreadnought takes Wanda out on the next turn. Egg is able to take a Max Geyser like a champ, 
and Dreadnought goes back to his normal form after taking a rock slide. Razor Shell does a pretty hefty amount of damage, but Egg heals up with the Citrus Berry. Dreadnought misses another Razor Shell, and Egg brings it down with a Spirit Shackle. With the second badge in hand, we find ourselves in Galar Mine 2, where we're forced to battle Beat again. Wanda fires off a Blaze Kick, taking over half of Solossus' health, but it returns the favor by using Endeavor. Metronome becomes Shadow Punch on the next turn, and Solossus falls. He sends out Gothita, who takes a critical hit Storm Throw. She fires back with a Psy Shock, but Wanda hangs in there with 2 HP to spare. By some miracle, we get to use Crunch, and Gothita goes down. Next up is Satena, who we hit with Weather Ball. Satena uses Psy Beam and takes Wanda out. Egg uses Belly Drum, which cuts his HP to maximize his attack. We take a Psy Beam and return with Fire Lash, dropping Hatena. Bead's last Pokemon is Ponyta, who uses Confusion with little effect. Metronome becomes Future Sight, and then Frenzy Plant, winning us the battle. We have to battle Team Yell again, but they don't stand a chance against Hop and I. Before we can challenge the next gym, we have to battle our newest rival, Marnie. Her Krogonk deals quite a bit of damage to Wanda with Venoshock, but we get lucky and use Draining Kiss, which brings back a lot of our HP. We take another Venoshock before dropping Krogonk with a high jump kick. Marty sends out her Scraggy next, who gets hit with a powerful dynamic punch and inflicts confusion damage on herself. Metronome becomes Petal Dance on the next turn, and Scraggy is taken out. Petal Dance continues on Morpego, taking about half of her HP. She manages to take out Wanda with a couple of Thundershocks. Egg finishes up the battle force with an Aqua Tail and an Ice Punch. With Marty out of the way, we can take on the next gym leader, Kabu. We tried this battle a few times with just Egg and Wanda, but it quickly became obvious that we were going to need another team member. The Machop line is able to learn Metronome, so after catching a Machop and evolving into a Machoke, we teach it Metronome and try again. Ninetales burns Wanda with Will-O-Wisp at the start of the battle. Wanda uses Thundershock and paralyzes Ninetales in return. Metronome becomes Circle Throw on the next turn, which forces Cinescorch to be dragged out into battle. Kabu Gigantamax is Cinescorch and uses Max Flutterby. We land a couple of weak attacks before Wanda is taken out by a G-Max move. Egg is up next and loses half of his HP to another attack, but restores a bit of health thanks to a Citrus Berry. A couple of turns later, Metronome becomes Air Slash and brings Cinescorch down. We send out our new Machoke named Moosles, and Arcanine attacks with Flame Wheel. His first Metronome becomes Aerial Ace and takes about a third of Arcanine's HP. Unfortunately, we use Heal Pulse in the next turn and fully heal our opponent. Moosles uses his Citrus Berry after another Flame Wheel and attacks with Bug Buzz, dealing very little damage. After a Strength and a High Jump Kick, Arcanine finally falls. Kabu still has Ninetales and our health is in bad shape. By some miracle, Metronome becomes Razor Shell, giving us the victory and the Fire Badge. Our battle with Team Yell in Route 6 goes exactly as you would expect, but we still need to battle Hop before we can challenge the next gym leader. Hop's Cram Rant drops right away to a Zap Cannon after hitting Wanda with a Fury Cutter. Toxel is sent out next, but Dragon Tail forces it to switch with Rabu. Rabu uses Double Kick, but falls victim to Wanda's Q Charm. She uses Ice Beam and freezes Raboot in the process. After a few turns, we take Raboot out with Sky Attack. Wanda manages to get Hop's Silicobra to about half HP before she gets taken out. Boozles is able to take out Silicobra after a few more turns. Toxel is sent back out and gets quickly deleted thanks to Future Sight. The battle against B proved to be pretty challenging. Remember how I mentioned that there was a particular reason why we picked Sobble as our starter? Well, that's because Inteleon can learn Metronome, and now it's time to add it to our team. Our Inteleon, Aqua, lands a Fury attack on B's Hitmontop before being hit with a powerful Revenge. Thankfully, he has a Citrus Berry. Aqua uses Flare Blitz on the next turn, but gets taken down by another Revenge. We send out Moosles, who takes care of Hitmontop with an Anchor Shot. B's Pangro uses Circle Throw and drags Wanda into battle. He uses Bullet Punch, which does a good amount of damage, and Metronome becomes Eruption. After another Bullet Punch and a Citrus Berry, we take out Pangro with a Slash and a Flamethrower. We're able to take about half of Surfetched HP with a Psy Strike, but Wanda goes down after a Revenge. Moosles is able to take Surfetched out with a Spark and a Waterfall. B's last Pokemon is a Gigantamax Machamp, who takes a ton of HP from us using Max Cheese Strike. It only takes one more to bring Moosles down, and we're forced to switch to our last Pokemon, Egg. Machamp deals a heavy blow with Strength, but Egg is able to save the day with a Play Rough, earning us the 4th Gym Badge. Bead starts to cause trouble, so we have another battle with them before we head out. Aqua deals a devastating blow to his Duosion with a Night Slash, but Bead uses a Super Potion. Aqua isn't able to bring it down over the next few turns, and faints from a few Psy Beams. We send out Egg, but he uses Pain Split, which only benefits our opponent. We get lucky enough for Ice Beam to bring Duosion down on the next turn. Gotharita is up next, but quickly gets defeated. Egg uses Crab Hammer against Hatram, but gets taken out by two Psy Beams. We send out Moosles next, who uses Heal Pulse and Earth Power. 
Hatchram takes out Moosles with a side beam, and we switch to our last Pokemon, Wanda. She's able to bring Hatchram down with Whirlpool, and Bead sends out Ponyta. We use Wood Hammer, but get pelted by several side beams. Wanda lands an Air Cutter before needing to use her Citrus Berry. We put Ponyta to sleep with Yawn, and then punch him square in the face with Mega Punch. Too bad Wanda didn't miss and hit Bead instead. After passing through Glimwood Tangle, we find ourselves at the next gym battle against Opal. I battled Opal many, many times before realizing that I would either need to severely overlevel my team or add another member. Lucky for us, one of the Pokemon in Generation 8 that can learn Metronome is Snorlax. After catching a Snorlax and teaching it Metronome, we head back to Opal to try again. Her Weezing knows the move Sludge, which deals quite a bit of damage and can leave your Pokemon poisoned. Aqua is able to take most of Weezing's HP with Energy Ball and Metal Claw, but Sludge and Poison damage get the best of her. We send out Egg next, who gets hit with Sludge three times before finally bringing Weezing down. Opal sends out Togekiss next, so we switch to our Snorlax Naps. We do this because our Togekiss knows the move Ancient Power, which is super effective against Egg. Naps takes two Air Slashes from Togekiss before dropping it with Poison Tail. Opal's Mawile uses Crunch and gets hit with a powerful round from Naps. Naps uses his berry after another crunch, and Mawile gets taken down by Bullet Seed. Opal sends out her Alchemy, and we're able to take a G-Max finale like a champ and use Strength. We survive a second attack, and Naps uses Round before being defeated on the next turn. We switch to Egg, who gets his HP stolen from Draining Kiss before falling. Alchemy proceeds to steal more HP than we're able to take away, but eventually after several turns, it gets taken down thanks to Moosles using Gunk Shot. With the Fairy Badge now in our possession, we head out to Route 7. This next battle against Hop has been one of the more difficult battles in these challenge runs. Egg uses Acid and Overheat to take out his Trevenant pretty quickly. He goes for Bolton next, so we switch to Moosles, but Bolton uses Roar many times which keeps dragging out different members of my team. Finally, Moosles defeats Bolton with Brine, and Hop sends out Cinderace. We switch to Aqua, and after a lot of bad RNG, Cinderace takes us out. Egg is sent into battle and gets taken out in one attack. After two turns, Moosles is able to defeat Cinderace with Focus Blast. Hop sends out a Snorlax, who gets burned thanks to Moosles using Scald. He paralyzes us with Body Slam and begins to use Stockpile to raise his defense. Metronome becomes Rest after Moosles uses his Citrus Berry, and Burn Damage takes care of Snorlax. We switch back to Naps to take on Heatmore, and he falls after several turns thanks to bad luck. Now that Hop has once again been defeated, we head out to Route 8. In the next town of Surchester, we can challenge the Rock-type gym leader Gordy. We start with Aqua so that Gordy won't gain type advantage. Metronome becomes Lick on the first turn, and paralyzes Barbaracle, who starts to use Rock Tomb anyway. We get very lucky on our next two turns and use Pollen Puff and Bolt Beat. Gordy sends out Shuckle next, who gets hit by Eruption on the first turn, but gets taken out by Muddy Water on the next. Stone Joiner sets up Stealth Rock and then gets hit by Leech Seed. Aqua uses Payback next, dealing a massive blow and taking Stone Joiner out. Gordy Gigantamaxes his last Pokemon Colossal and then takes most of our HP in one attack. Aqua heals with her Citrus Berry, but gets taken out on the next turn. We send out Egg next since Colossal has one G-Max move left, and Egg has type disadvantage anyway. Egg gets taken out quickly, but at least Colossal is back to normal. Mooseless is up next, and takes a Heat Crash. Thankfully, he also has a Citrus Berry to heal up a bit. The only offensive move he uses is Triple Kick before being taken out. We send out Wanda, but she only lasts two turns. Naps is our last hope. He uses Clanging Scales, getting Colossal down to the red, and finally brings it home with Shadow Claw. See you later, Gordy. Tell your mom to give me a call. We have to battle Hop again, so let's make this one quick. It takes quite a few turns to take care of his double since Hop fully heals him, but he eventually goes down to Pollen Puff. Hop sends out Pinkurchin next, so we switch to Moosles and ultimately take her down with a Petal Dance. We switch back to Aqua to take on his Corviknight, but Aqua falls after a few Drill Pecks. We switch to Egg, who uses Roar and drags out Hop Snorlax. Metronome becomes Fisher, and by some miracle actually lands, taking Snorlax out. Cinderace is up next, and takes Egg out with a critical hit Pyro Ball. Moosles meets the same fate before we send out Naps. We take a couple of Mega Kicks before using Jaw Lock and Tackle, taking Cinderace out. We still have to deal with Corviknight, but Wanda uses Prismatic Laser on her second turn, winning us the battle. Do we even need to mention the Team Yell battles anymore? After navigating through some freezing water, we have to battle Marnie again before we can challenge the seventh gym. Marnie starts with Lightbird and we start with Aqua. Aqua uses Minimize, followed by Thunder Punch and Dive to bring Lightbird down. Marnie goes for more Pico next, so we switch to Wanda to avoid taking massive damage from her electric attacks. Wanda ends up getting paralyzed on the first turn, but deals heavy damage with a Drain Punch. Morpico gets the best of Wanda after several sparks, but what I really wasn't expecting was for Naps to use Attract. Naps then uses Hypnosis and Substitute, putting Morpico in a tough spot. 
Naps uses Rest, and then Bolt Strike and Dragon Darts on Morpeko, taking it down. Marty sends out Scrafty next, so we switch to Egg since Naps is at a disadvantage. Egg uses Poison Tail and Parabolic Charge early on, but it takes several turns to get Scrafty to fall. Marty's Toxicrode takes Egg out, so we switch back to Aqua. We're barely able to deal any damage before Toxicrode takes Aqua down. Moosles doesn't do much better, but he does manage to land a Leech Seed, which may be all we need to win. We send out our last Pokemon, Naps, and he's finally able to bring down Toxicroak with an Air Slash. Now it's time to take on the 7th Gym Leader, Piers. He kicks off the battle pretty strong and deals a lot of damage to Moosles, but luckily Metronome becomes Recover and fixes us right up. Moosles uses Strength and then Superpower, dealing a ton of damage and taking Scrafty out. Malamar is up next, and he drops Moosles in one attack. We send out Aqua, who takes nearly all of Malamar's health before going down. Egg finishes Malamar off with a Giga Drain, and Pierce sends out Obstagoon, but we end up getting very poor RNG and Obstagoon takes Egg out. Wanda is up next, and her Q Charm ability gets the best of Obstagoon, causing him not to attack. Metronome becomes Morning Sun on the next turn and fully heals Wanda. After several weak attacks, Wanda uses Smog and poisons Obstagoon, but he still manages to take her out. Naps is all we have left, so we send him out. Obstagoon falls to Leech Life after taking more poison damage, and Pierce sends out his last Pokemon, Skuntank. I learned that Skuntank's Sucker Punch will always fail because the game doesn't know what attack Metronome will be yet. Skuntank takes a critical hit Stone Edge and then uses Toxic. Naps wastes several turns but thankfully has a Citrus Berry to help out. Finally, Metronome becomes Rollout, and the Dark Badge is ours. There's only one badge to go, and it's always the hardest one to obtain in these challenge videos. Ryan's Double Battle makes this challenge even more frustrating because you can't select which Pokemon you want Metronome to hit. We start off with Moosles and Wanda, while Ryan goes for Flygon and Gigalith. Flygon's Breaking Swipe doesn't affect Wanda and doesn't do very much damage to Moosles. Wanda and Moosles use Grass Knot and Leaf Tornado on Flygon, which doesn't do a lot of damage. Had I been able to direct Metronome to Gigalith, we would have been much better off. Gigalith sets up Stealth Rock and Flygon uses Steel Wing on Wanda. Moosles uses Volt Switch, which means I have to send out a different Pokemon. We send out Naps and Wanda uses Focus Blast on Gigalith, taking him out. Sandaconda is sent out next, and Naps uses Hyper Voice damaging both opponents while Wanda uses Dive on Sandaconda. Naps finishes off Sandaconda with Crab Hammer, so Raihan sends out his Gigantamax Duraludon. Naps is able to survive an attack from Duraludon, and Wanda uses Avalanche on Flygon, bringing it down. By some miracle, Naps uses Spore and puts Duraludon to sleep, and then uses Blue Flare taking nearly half of his HP. Naps then uses Strength Sap, healing himself while Duraludon goes back to normal. Wanda gets taken out, so we send out Egg, who uses Ingrain. After a few more turns, Egg finally finishes off Duraludon with an Electro Ball. Our luck was insane in that battle. Now that we have all 8 badges, we can proceed to Wenda to take on the semifinals. The semifinals are pretty easy battles, so we're not going to waste time going through them. Both Marty and Hop go down without much issue, but we run into some challenges while facing Oleana at Rose Tower. Oleana's Frost Last starts with two double teams, but we finally get lucky during one of our attempts, and Moosles lands a Fire Punch, taking her out. Oleana sends out her Zarina next, so we switch to Wanda because Zarina knows acrobatics. Wanda's only able to take about half of Zarina's HP before going down. We send out Egg, who uses Acid Spray and Double Edge to beat Zarina. Oleana sends out Salazzle, so we switch to Aqua, who is immediately poisoned. Salazzle starts to use Venoshock, which does a ton of damage if the target is poisoned. We send Egg into battle, and he is also poisoned right away. We get lucky, however, and Metronome becomes Prismatic Laser, bringing Salazzle down. Milotic is sent out next, and takes out Egg with Surf. We send out Moosles, who takes several Surfs without getting lucky enough to deal much damage in return, until finally Metronome becomes Guillotine and takes Milotic out. Oleana's last Pokemon is her Gigantamax Garboder, who fails to take out Moosles on its first attack. Moosles uses Rain Dance and gets taken out on the next turn. We send out Naps, who takes a G-Max Malador like a champ, but it does leave him poisoned. Naps uses Brave Bird, causing him to take recoil damage on top of the poison. Garboder goes back to normal and uses Toxic Spikes while Naps heals with the Citrus Berry. Garboder takes Naps out, so we send out the newest addition of our team, Spoopy, who saves the day with Extra Sensory. I also won't waste a bunch of time going over the finals against Bead, Nessa, B, and Raihan because they were fairly straightforward and pretty easy to complete. Before we can take on Leon, we have to have a pretty annoying battle against Chairman Rose. The Steel-type Pokemon really dealt some damage against Egg and Wanda given that they're Fairy types. Spoopy also has a pretty difficult time. After several losses, I decide to swap them out for two more Machoke, who I named Rip and Beef, and another Snorlax, who I named Snack. Chairman Rose starts the battle off with his Escavalier, and we go with Rip. Our first attack becomes Hail, 
While a Scavalier deals a good amount of damage with Iron Head, Metronome becomes Incinerate on the next turn, but it doesn't do as much damage as I was hoping. Rip uses his Citrus Berry, and Metronome becomes Heat Crash, bringing down a Scavalier. Rip struggles to deal any real damage to Rose's Ferrothorn and is quickly taken out. We switch to Snack, who uses Blaze Kick and easily takes Ferrothorn down. Rose sends out Kling Kling, who lands a critical hit Wild Charge, but Snacks uses will o Whips and burns him. Snack recovers some health with his Citrus Berry after a couple more Wild Charges, and Kling Kling is eventually taken out by burn damage and a headbutt. Berserker is sent out next, and takes a decent amount of damage from multi-attack. After a few more rounds of not taking any damage, Snack goes down to Iron Head. We send out Moosel to hopefully wrap this up, but he falls after just a couple of turns. Aqua uses Sky Attack on Berserker, but it's not enough to take it out, and Berserker takes her down. We send out Naps next, who uses Solar Blade and finally takes Berserker out. Chairman Rose's last Pokemon is his G-Max Copper Raja, who doesn't deal much damage to Naps. Naps attacks with Snipe Shot and Thunder Shock before Copper Raja returns to normal, and then Metronome becomes Heat Wave. We take three more Iron Heads and nearly lose the battle, but we get lucky and use Attack Order and defeat Chairman Rose. I knew the battle against Leon would be challenging, but I really didn't think it would be quite as challenging as it was. Leon's Aegislash is a huge hassle to deal with right from the beginning thanks to the move King Shield. We never know whether Metronome is going to deal damage or not, so not being able to land nearly half of our attacks is extremely frustrating. I decided to go ahead and fully evolve Egg, Wanda, and Moosels for the final battle. Metronome became Fusion Flare on the first turn, but King Shield prevented it from landing. Even at level 85, Naps takes a good amount of damage from Sacred Sword. Naps uses Soft Boil and heals up, and then uses Grassy Glide, which doesn't deal much damage, but Naps uses Heal Pulse on the next turn and fully heals his opponent. We get lucky and use Sucker Punch, and take Aegislash's health down quite a bit. It still takes several more turns before we're able to bring it down with Horn Leech. We switch to Egg next because Leon's Haxorus knows the move Earthquake. Egg uses Water Shuriken and Burning Jealousy, but is easily taken out after several Iron Tails. We send out Wanda, who uses Cut, and then Smackdown to bring down Haxorus. We switch to Aqua for Leon's Rhyperior, but she's barely able to scratch him before going down. Moosles is up next, and uses x Scissor, dealing a fair amount of damage. We follow up with Extreme Speed and Fire Blast to take Rhyperior out. Leon's Rillaboon tries several times to use Endeavor, but it doesn't affect the Moosles. After several turns, we bring Rillaboom down with Vice Grip and Gear Grind. Moosles goes down quickly to Dragapult, and we send Naps back to the field. Naps is able to take about half of Dragapult's HP before meeting the same fate as Moosles. Things aren't looking good, but we send out Wanda, who uses Ember and Payback, taking Dragapult out. Leon's last Pokemon is his famous GMAX Charizard, who takes Wanda's last bit of HP with no trouble. All we have left is Spoopy, so we send him out and cross our fingers. By some miracle, he uses Muddy Water, taking a ton of Charizard's HP, and then survives a max airstream. Charizard and Spoopy both take damage from the sandstorm created by Charizard's first attack, and it causes Spoopy to use a Citrus Berry. We're able to survive another max airstream, and Metronome becomes Sludge Wave, bringing Charizard down and claiming us the new champions of the Gala region. I had no idea just how long this video would take to make when I decided to take on the challenge. If you decide to try this yourself, more power to you. Maybe you'll have better RNG than I did. Be sure to subscribe if you're new, and do me a favor and hit that like button. Thanks for watching, and a special thank you to all the channel members for all of your support. My name is Trench, and I'll see you on the next adventure.